Good morning to everyone. God bless you all. Uh, we're here to praise and worship the Lord with you. We just want to say real shortly, we thank God for all of you. We know that we've all been through a lot over the last two years. This is the first time that we, we've uh, had the opportunity to stand before you. So we just want to worship the Lord, and we ask you to say a prayer with for us, and that God will bless you through the songs. Whatever you've gone through within the last two years, two and a half years, whatever it is, the pandemic, whatever you come through, loss of loved ones, uh, illnesses, God has brought us through it all, and we want to thank you. Bless you. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, It sings, yes. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah.
the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God he is wonderful. Hallelujah! Salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God is good all the time. God is blessing when. Did you enjoy Dr. Jackson? Did you enjoy our choir? Did you enjoy yourselves? <laughs> That's vanity. You got a bigger hand on the last one. Amen. I'll pray for you. Amen. But the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. What a mighty God we serve. See, we had a little addition of having the choir sing on this morning. First time in a long time along with Dr. Jackson. And just bear with us. We're under the anointing and dictates of the Holy Spirit. We have a word for you this morning. A word from the Lord, Sister Carrie. God is so good, isn't he? Just one quick announcement I do need to give you all because it doesn't affect you all. But it's up ahead, so you got time. Third Sunday is Father's Day. And usually we have a joint service. And Reverend Emmanuel Scott is, is with us. There will be a joint service. And it will be out there in the parking lot. And it will be uh, at the regular time, 845, 9 o'clock, that joint service. But I'll be announcing it again. And that's also our baccalaureate uh, service. And if you have any graduates uh, that you know of, please call the office and they will uh, help you. And then also 
all Sunday school book pickups. Be sure to pick up your Sunday school books. We have outstanding superintendents. We have outstanding teachers. And they do want you to get your book. And please join us in Sunday school from 1 to 2 p.m. God is good. All the time. Y'all going to pray for me? I pray for y'all. Y'all ought to pray for me too. So if I forgot anything, I will come back to it. So, beloved, we're in a new book of the Bible. And I need you to turn to Joel. Joel chapter 1 and just hang around the book of Joel if you're not familiar with turning scriptures but if you are I want you to run with me by looking on Jamatron or turning in your your Bibles but a really great book that speaks to us today and thank Sister Hudson for being on the <laughs> Jamatron we got her and Brother Hudson doing double duty, triple duty, quadruple duty. So Joel chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says, The vine is dried up. And the fig tree is withered. And God would have me tell you that the vine and the fig tree in the Bible is used to represent the nation of Israel. The pomegranate, the palm and the apple tree, all the trees of the field are dried up. Surely, the joy of mankind is withered away. Come now, let us approach the throne room. Come now, Holy Spirit. Your word says you won't speak of yourself, but those things you hear from the Father and the Son, you'll impart to us. You said, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, what thus saith the Lord. Help us, Holy Spirit, to do that. And then in the midst, many prayers are going forward as the word is going forward hear all of our prayers touch all of us please and bless us all may we all leave this sanctuary blessed by you and give us a blessed week coming up give your people favor Lord heal those who need healing comfort those who need comforting May your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Giving honor to God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for all of our sins. The Bible says he hung, he bled, he died. But on the third day, he got up from the grave. I want to use as a subject title on this morning, the prophet Joel, the plague specialist. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, the plague specialist. Joel's name means Jehovah is God. And Sister Mary, I want you to tell Sister Otis that I'm not preaching about her son. <laughs> We're preaching about the prophet Joel. His name means Jehovah is God. 
we learn from the first verse that Joel is the son of Pethuel, which we know nothing about. <laughs> nothing is known of the, of the personal history of Joel. He was a prophet of Judah in the southern kingdom. Joel was probably one of the earliest of the writing prophets, one of the minor prophets. We see the quotation of Joel chapter 3 and verse 16 on the inside of Amos chapter 1 and verse 2. The Bible says in Joel chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says, the Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people. And the strength of the children of Israel. Does your Bible say that? And then we find these words in Amos chapter 1 and verse number 2. We find that it says, and he said, the Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the habitations of the shepherds shall mourn. Can y'all say mourn? And the top of Carmel shall wither. An actual plague has come and devastated the nation. Devastated the land. The prophecy of Joel begins with a short statement. The word of the Lord that came to Joel. Sister so Curry, Joel was the recipient of divine revelation. Because Joel does not give us a lot of information in the very beginning, unlike Hosea and Isaiah, we cannot say with certainty what period of time he ministered in. Reverend Biggers, Joel calls upon the old men to, to recall if they have known in their lifetimes of any visitation of locusts or even in their father's time like the locust plague that has devastated the land with swarms of locusts. If you look with me again at Joel chapter 1 and verse number 2, the, the Bible says, Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, Dr. Jackson, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Joel was a man of faith who taught the people to, to rely on the sufficiency of God. Mm. Joel prophesied that, that God is sovereignly guiding the affairs of world history towards his goals. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, God is in control. If you look with me at Joel chapter 1 and verse number 15, the, the Bible says, alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. 
and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Well, we know where it comes from. We learn from Joel that, that God alone is God. We learn from Joel about some of the attributes of God. God is a God of grace and mercy. God is a God of love and patience. God is a God of justice and righteousness. God calls for true worship from his followers. Hmm. Can I go there? The plague of locusts gave Joel the illustration he needed to appeal to the conscience of the nation. I want to borrow from John Phillips' description of Joel and call him the plague specialist, the prophet of the plague. Joel's prophecy can be divided into four parts. Part one talks about the present famine. Part two talks about it talks about the predicted foes. Part three talks about the promised forgiveness. And then part four talks about the prophetic focus. Jonathan, the future. How many of y'all know that God knows the future? This is Joanne Joel's message was an interpretation of the national disaster that was going on in his day. A plague of locusts and a drought devastated the nation. How many know this morning that a nation can get devastated? And Joel had to tell the nation how to get out of the disaster, the national disaster, and then get back on track again. And he prophesied about the coming of the glorious kingdom of God. How many know that no matter what that goes on, that in the end, everything gonna be all right? Tell two neighbors because God is in control. Joel's major theme is the day of the Lord and the need of God's people to be prepared. How many know that we need to be prepared? Joel was commissioned to call the people back to the worship of the true God. A wise preacher or a wise teacher will get the people's attention by referring to something that they're all, that everybody is concerned about. Something that everybody's talking about. In this case, the people in Joel's days were talking about the plague of locusts and about the economic condition that it was causing. A swarm of locusts can devastate a land and cause great financial damage to an agricultural economy an agricultural society. It's an awesome sight, Jonathan, and such Curry to, to see countless locusts, so many that it blots out the sun. It's a fearful sight. 
these locusts have almost human-like characteristics. Just read the book of Revelation. On the ground, they march in regular lines like armies of soldiers. Can y'all hear me? And nothing, Sister Jackie, can stop them. Judah had been invaded by a swarm of locusts and Joel gets caught up in the spirit and lets the people know that they are going to be invaded by forces that are going to be far worse than a swarm of locusts. Sister Robbie, how many know that God knows the future? These vast swarm of locusts that darken the sun, devouring every green thing, brought the people of Judah down to their knees. How many know that there's some things in this life that will bring you to your knees? <laughs> if, if, you didn't, if you didn't pray, you can pray now. <laughs> Am I right about it? Joel brought the people back to the worship of the true God like the other prophets and he brought them back by the word of God how many know that the word of the Lord has power can I, can I back it up this morning uh, if you look at Joel chapter 1 and verse number 1 the Bible says the word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethul. Is that all right? Uh, then if you look in your Bible at Jeremiah chapter one and verse number two, the Bible says, to whom the word of the Lord came in the day of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. It is by the word of the Lord that God is going to bring people to repentance. How many know that the word of the Lord can change you? <laughs> can I go there this morning? Uh, if you look in your Bible at Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse number 3. The Bible says the word of the Lord. Somebody shout the word of the Lord. Come on, say it one more time. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzai, in the land of the Chaldeans, by the river of Kebar. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Is that all right? It is the word of the Lord that can change the hearts of men. Can y'all hear me this morning? The word of the Lord can change the hearts of men. If you look at Hosea chapter one and verse number one, the Bible says the word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beeri, in the day of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. And in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joaz, king of Israel. Does your Bible say that? Uh, what are you saying, preacher? God gave these prophets the word of the Lord. And it's the word of the Lord that can change the hearts of men. Can I go there this morning? Well, if you look at Micah chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says in Micah 1.1, 1, 1, the word of the Lord that came to Micah, the Morathrastite, in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, king of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. The word of the Lord will help you deal with plagues. Can y'all hear me this morning? 
the word of the Lord will help you deal with national disasters. If you need help this morning, dealing with what you're dealing with, the word of the Lord can help you. Can I go there? Don't go to your best friend first. Go to the Bible first. Uh, can I go a little further? If you look at Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says the word of the Lord. Somebody shout the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord which came unto Zephaniah, the son of Cushai, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the day of Josiah, the son of Ammon, kings of Judah. Take your neighbor, neighbor. My pastor speaks in tongues. Amen. <laughs> Can I go a little bit further? Well, it's the word of the Lord that will restore the joy of a nation. Can I go there this morning? Haggai chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says, Then came the word of the Lord to Haggai, the prophet, saying, Well, it's all about the word. How many know the word of God can change our world for the better? Can I go a little further? Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 1. Well, let's keep on moving. Let me get Malachi chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says, uh, The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Somebody shout the word of the Lord. If you want help this morning, you need the word of the Lord. Can I go there this morning? I don't care what you're going through, and I don't know what you're going through, but the word of the Lord can help you. Can I go there this morning? God heard their cry, and he removed the locusts, and he promised a new era of prosperity. The Bible says in Joel chapter 1 and verse 2 again, the Bible says, hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Has this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? The prophet calls upon the old men to recall if they have known any visitation in their time or in the times of their fathers similar to the locust plague which has devastated the land. Joel suggested that nothing of this magnitude had ever happened before in the country. Can I go there? John D. Whiting in the National Geographic magazine marveled how this prophet Joel, the ancient writer, could give such a descriptive, graphic, accurate presentation of what locusts can do when they devastate a land. Hmm. The question that Joel poses assumes that the answer would be no. We have not seen anything like this in the lifetime of our nation. How many of you know that there's some things going on now that we haven't seen before? Ah, but Joel says, I got a word for you. Can, can I go there? God is trying to get our attention. Would you be so kind to tell your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, God is trying to get our attention. Mm -hmm. Joel says there's never been anything like this before. Joel addressed the old men first because they had experience and could verify that they hadn't seen nothing like this before. 
neither their fathers either. Can I go there? The elders agreed that Joel, with Joel, that the nation was facing a catastrophe out of proportion that they had never seen before. It was something mm, people would tell their children about and tell their grandchildren about that they had not seen this before. Can I go there? Uh, the old men had to agree with Joel that something new is going on. Something strange is going on. Can I go there this morning? If you look at Joel chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, tell ye your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. Can I go there? Because this thing is unheard of, this destruction of locusts, um, because there was nothing like it that they could reference before. Uh, the news was to pass on from generation to generation. It's good to pass down to the younger generation what we've been through. Can I go there this morning? And what our ancestors have been through. Uh, sometimes we need to let the young folks know it hasn't always been this good. It hasn't always been this rosy. Somebody had to suffer and somebody had to struggle and somebody had to cry at midnight and somebody had to hurt and somebody had to go without. Amen. Can I go there? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you got to share your testimony. Take time to talk about what the Lord has done for you. Can I go there? How many of you can testify that God has been good to you? Can I back it up this morning? Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 7. The Bible says, remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee thy elders and they will tell thee they are told that the locust plague is so important that it must be part of the national memory Joel is saying look this locust plague is unique there's never been anything like it but there is coming another plague a unique period called the day of the Lord. The Bible says in Joel chapter 1 and verse 4, the Bible says what the locust swarm has left, the great locusts have eaten. What the great locusts, <laughs> Dr. Jackson, have left, the young locusts have eaten <laughs> what the young locusts have left other locusts have eaten can I go there this morning the successive swarms of locusts what one portion of them left the other portion devoured which shows the thoroughness of the nature of the destruction uh, these locusts were a real menace, a real destructive force, a destructive force to the lifestyle and the economy. Can I go there this morning? The massive invasion of locusts completely destroyed the land's vegetation. Uh, Jonathan, everything was completely denuded. The plague was a warning to the nation. How many know this morning that God will give a nation some warnings? Can I go there this morning? Joel is in a dramatic fashion warning 
the nation that there is a judgment to come. Can I go there this morning? Joe will move from a local judgment of his nation and he will prophesy on in to the future of a judgment that's going to come that's going to involve all the nations. Can I go there this morning? How many of you know that the day of the Lord is coming? The prophet Joel is the first one to use the term the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord begins with the great tribulation and it goes all the way through to the millennium which is the thousand year reign of Christ. The world will be totally devastated when Jesus Christ comes back to set up his kingdom. Ah, I got to pause right here. How many know Jesus is coming back again? Uh, I'm going to ask one more time. How many of y'all know Jesus is coming back again? Uh, how many are glad about it? How many know everything's going to be all right when he comes back? It's going to be all right. I know it's going to be all right. Can I go a little further? Joel makes it clear that just as nothing can stop the swarm of locusts, nothing can stop the day of the Lord. Can I go there this morning? Can I go there this morning? Well, if you go to Joel chapter 1 and verse number 5, the Bible says, awake. Somebody say, awake. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep. Somebody shall weep. And how all ye drinkers of wine because of the new wine for it is cut off y'all don't hear me this morning for it is cut off from your mouth well the drunkards are the first called upon to awaken out of their stupor out of their shocking astonishment out of their intoxication can I go there the drunkard who is known for his song God says it's time for you to weep now um, because his delightsome wine has been cut off can I go there this morning the locust has destroyed everything can I go there this morning though the invasion of the locust would affect the entire nation certain groups would be more directly hurt than others. He called for them, Joel called for them to mourn for the calamity that has overtaken them. Y'all gonna pray with me. Joel is the prophet of the plague. When there is a plague on the land, the children of God need to do something. Ah, can I go there this morning? When there is a plague on the land, the children of God need to mourn. Can I go there? Can I back it up this morning? Beloved, if you go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4, the Bible says, blessed are they that mourn. Am I right? <laughs> Reverend Katie, am I right? For they shall be comforted. How many of y'all believe that this morning? If you mourn, God says, I'll comfort you. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, Jesus said, if you mourn, he'll comfort you. Well, what is Joel doing? He's calling to attention the debased nature of the society and to the people's insensitivity to their moral condition Jonathan if sin keeps going on without being checked people become comfortable in their sin and they'll start saying look at me <laughs> and they'll begin to fall even lower 
into sin. Everybody is doing it, so it must be okay. Every imagination of the man's heart, God says, was wicked continually. How many of you know that man can get awfully wicked sometimes? Uh, can I go there this morning? Sometimes in a time of prosperity and overabundance, people have a tendency to forget about God and how they got where they are. Well, the nation got morally lax. They started doing their own thing. They started to let certain moral, moral behavior go on without checking it. Can I go there? They let certain things go on without mourning for the sin of the nation. Can I go there this morning? Before you know it, the entire nation had fallen into sin. When a nation falls into sin, then God will start sending warnings. Would you tell your neighbor, neighbor, warning, warning, warning. You'd be so kind to tell the other neighbor, neighbor, warning, warning, warning. Would you look behind you and say, neighbor, warning, warning, warning. Let me go a little further right here. Those who are in favor of wine will be the first to suffer because the grapes will be devoured. Can I go there? This reveals that the beginning of the downfall of the nation was the great sin of drunkardness. Can I bring this home to you? Can I quote Dr. J. Vernon McGee to you? J. Vernon McGee says, Dr. J. Vernon McGee says, a, a niece and sister, he says, quote, we are told that there are dozens of cocktail parties going on every day in Washington, D.C. It is no wonder that some of the decisions that are handed down look as if they are from someone not in their right mind. Oh, sister, Sister Wilkins, can I read that to you one more time? And it's just as true as can be. Uh, can I go there? And Dr. McGee says, quote, we are told that there are dozens of cocktail parties going on every day, Woody and Sister Woody, in Washington, D.C. And it's no wonder that some of the decisions that are handed down look as if they are from somebody, someone not in their right mind. Now let me go on further now. The Bible says in Joel chapter 1 and verse number 6. The Bible says for a nation. Somebody say a nation. Is come up upon my land strong and without number. Whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. And he has the cheek teeth of a great lion. Can I go there this morning? The locust is like an invading nation that is so powerful and fierce. The teeth of the locust is like the teeth of a lion. The locust is a destroyer like the lion, which can rip anything up with its powerful teeth. These little insects can tear a tree down in seconds when they come in mountain numbers. Can I go there this morning? In Joel chapter 1 and verse number 7, 
the Bible says, he has laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He has made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Does your Bible say that? These locusts attack the vines. They attack the fig trees. Two essentials of the Jewish life. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal. Come on, somebody. And to kill and to destroy. But I come that you might have life. Come on, somebody. And have it. Come on, Reverend KD. And have it more abundantly. Am I right about it? Hmm. Joel, the plague specialist, the prophet of the plague, tells us how to handle a plague. Everybody don't know how to handle a plague. Uh, Joel tells us how to touch the heart of God and how to get a plague removed. How many know sometimes we need a plague remover? Yeah. The vine and the fig tree symbolize Israel, symbolize the nation. The enemy is always on the lookout. And how Reverend Biggers, he might destroy the people of God. Jonathan, that's why we have to have on the whole armor of God. If you don't put on your helmet, he'll hit you in your head. Can I go there this morning? If your loins aren't girded about with truth, he'll stab you in your belly. Can I go there this morning? Well, there's a way to get rid of plagues. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, there's a way to get rid of plagues. And God always has a way out. Timothy, God always has a remedy. God always has the last word. God always has help for his people. Uh, how many know we can depend on the Lord, Sister Curry, for the help of God? No matter how things seem so bad to the world, we got help on our side. How many can say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Well, my sister, there's something that we can do when the plague is on us. Can I tell you what to do this morning? Well, if you go to Joel chapter 1 and verse 8. The Bible says, lament. Somebody shout, lament. Amen. Come on, shout it like you mean, lament. Amen. Now take a deep breath and shout it real loud. Amen. Lament like a virgin, girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. Well, God tells his people, when you're in trouble, you got a well like a young virgin woman whose husband died, whose bridegroom died. Uh, he told the nation that you got to mourn for your calamity. Mourn because of your calamity. Can I go there this morning? Tell their neighbor, it's morning time. Whenever we come to God in repentance that moves the heart of God. Whenever we are sorry for our sins, help me Holy Ghost, that moves the hand of God. I'm sorry to tell you that the solution is not in Washington, D.C. Uh, you got the solution on your two knees. Can I go there this morning? All my help comes from the Lord. Can I go there this morning? Whenever we sincerely repent as a nation that touches the heart of God, the locust had 
destroy the vine. And God said, even stripped it down to the bark. And I had destroyed the fig trees to everything looked white. In other words, God is saying you're in a devastating situation. The nation is hurting. The nation needs help. How many know that sometimes as a nation, you can need help? Can I go there this morning? Well, why the bitterness? And why all the weeping? Because the offerings that they presented to the Lord depended upon the vine, the house of worship, the house of God was affected. Can I go there? And therefore, the covenant relationship with God was affected. And therefore, their prosperity was affected. And therefore, their blessings were affected. And therefore, their future was affected. So God tells the priest, you got to mourn now. Can I back it up this morning? Can I back it up this morning? Joel chapter 1 and verse number 9. The Bible says, the meat offering and the drink offering is cut off. Somebody shout cut off. Is cut off from the house of the Lord. Can y'all hear me this morning? The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers mourn. Somebody shout mourn. Somebody shout mourn this morning. Can I go there this morning? Well, hallelujah. The plague had a negative effect on the worship system. It's, it is amazing. Help me, Holy Ghost. How when you get out of touch with God. Can I go there? When you get away from God. Everything gets out of sync. And everything starts to crumble. Can I go there this morning? When you get out of fellowship with God. Uh, the good things that used to happen. Don't happen anymore. Can I go there? You told God. You don't want prayer in the school. Can I go there? You told God. Take down your nativity scene. Can I go there? You told God. Take down those ten commandments. Can I go there? You told God. Get your name off the coin. Can I go there? You told God. Uh, don't spank little Johnny. Can I go there this morning? You told God. I don't need you anymore. I can do what I want, when I want, anytime I want, because I'm grown. I don't need you now. My ancestor needed you, but I don't need you now. I can make it on my own. I can pick myself up. Can I go there? When you cut off your worship system, when you cut off your connection with God, then the mental health of the nation start to suffer. You can't have a healthy nation without God in your nation. If you don't have God in your nation, then you're going to have a sick nation, a hostile nation, a violent nation, a mean nation, a do anything nation, a kill your nation, a shed innocent blood nation. Do y'all know what I'm talking about this morning? Can you get with me this morning? Can you pray with me this morning? The prophet, the plague doctor, the plague specialist, says it's time 
some more. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, come on, what I? Come on. Sister KD, it's time to mourn. You told God, I don't need you anymore. I'm, Sister Booker, I'm grown now. Estella, I'm big now. Uh, uh, George Washington, he needs you. Hamilton needs you. Jefferson needs you. Madison needed you. Benjamin Franklin needed you. And Hamilton, all the I don't need you now. I'm grown now. Sister Robinson, Woody, when you get out of fellowship with God, when out of a relationship with God, he said, I'll, I'll let you see how life is without me. Choir, can you go with me this morning? Uh, Sister Young, can you go with me this morning? You told me you don't need me anymore. Okay. You know that old saying, go on with your bad self. <laughs> we'll see if you need me. Y'all, let me go on here. Amen. When you cut off your worship system with God, it affects the mind of the people, the mental health of the nation. You can't have a healthy nation without God. Certain things you cannot cut off. It affects the mind of the nation. Without it, we'll become a sick nation. A nation without God will be sick, cruel, brutal, and violent. Out of control. The prophet of the plague said, cut off the grain, cut off the grapes, cut off the olives, then you're going to affect everybody. And it's time to mourn. Watch it now. Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn because if you do it, you'll be comforted. How many know we need comforting this morning? Now, 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 now watch it. I got to break it down. Take it from, from the back to the present. They needed the grain. They needed the grapes. They needed the olives in order to have the daily worship with God. Can I back it up this morning? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, they needed three things. Can I go there? Exodus chapter 29, verses 38 through 42. Can I go there? This is what you are to offer on the altar. Regularly, each day. Somebody shout, each day. Two lambs a year old. Offer one in the morning. And the other at twilight. Come on, somebody. With the first lamb, offer a tenth of an ephod of fine flour mix. Somebody said grain. And the locusts are going to attack the grain now. <laughs> With a quarter of a hen of oil. Uh, locusts are attack the oil, haven't they? From pressed oil. Come on. And a quarter of a hen of wine. Uh, they don't attack the vine, haven't they? As a drink offering. Sacrifice the other lamb at twilight with the same grain offering and as drink offering as in the morning. A pleasing... No, 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 no. KD, that means God like it. A pleasing... Can y'all hear me this morning? That means God like it. A pleasing aroma, an offering made to who? To the Lord by fire. But suppose you don't have any oil. You don't have any grain. You don't have any wine. Because the locust done destroyed everything. That means everything is out of order. Because you're missing three things. Can I go there? When you take away Jesus, you take away the grain. Ah, the bread of life. Can I go there this morning? When you take away Jesus, you take away the grapes. Ah, the joy of our salvation. Can I go there this morning? When you take away Jesus, 
you take away the oil the Holy Spirit is represented by the oil you take away the power to live a victorious life take away the power to live a sanctified life take away the power to live a prosperous life can I go there this morning the prophet of the plague Joel said when you take away the grain when you take away the wine when you take away the oil it's time to mourn to your neighbor neighbor it's morning time <laughs> to your neighbor neighbor it's morning time the nation needs to mourn can I go there this morning you have closets at your house you need to go in your closet uh, and begin to mourn can I go there uh, I said preacher what shall I say uh, you need to go in your closet and say there's shooting in the churches can I go there so it's time to mourn can I go there sister Robinson you need to say there's shooting in the elementary school can I go there it's time to mourn can I go there this morning you can go to the hospital trying to recover y'all don't hear me somebody can pop up in the recovery room y'all don't hear me tell your neighbor neighbor it's morning time how many y'all know it's morning time can i go there this morning i'm coming on in here how, can i go there this morning well these shootings are nothing but plagues uh, Dr. Coburn, these are 21st century plagues. But I'm glad we got a plague specialist. We got a plague doctor. Am I right about it? Everybody can't handle a plague. Uh, there's some things that a primary care doctor can do. But every now and then, I don't go to my primary care doctor. For certain things, certain things only a specialist can handle. Teen neighbor, neighbor. We need a specialist. Yeah, Joel is a specialist. He's a plague specialist. He knows how to get rid of plagues. He knows how to handle plagues. He's been anointed to handle plagues. To your neighbor, neighbor, when you get rid of Jesus, everything's going to be out of order. Can I back it up? Can I back it up? When you get rid of Jesus, Sister Otis, everything going to be out of order. Can I back it up? When you get away from the Lord, everything going to be out of order. Can I go there? Oh, some of our ancestors came here with a little bit of nothing, but a whole lot of God and a whole lot of Jesus and a whole lot of Lord, and they overcame everything. They weren't shooting in hospitals. They weren't shooting in the elementary schools with little bitty babies. There's a mental illness. But, 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 but don't, don't worry. We got a plague specialist who deals with plagues, Joyce. He handles plagues. Good God Almighty. Can I go there this morning? Oh, Joe said, everything is just like <laughs> messed up. <laughs> Can I back it up? Joel chapter 1 and verse 10 the Bible says the field is wasted come on curry the land mourneth for the corn Jonathan I ain't got no good report he says I look throughout the land everything come on now he, 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 he's cutting the nation open. He's looking in with a diagnosis, a prognosis. Can I go there? T neighbor, neighbor, a diagnosis with a prognosis. Mm. Some things politicians can't help you in. Y'all looking to Washington and God is looking at you. Can I go there? The field is wasted. The land mourneth. 
For the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil languishes. Preacher, what does that mean? Everything's messed up. The whole country, Joel said, is messed up. The plague has devastated the life of the nation. The three staples, S-T-A-P-L-E, the three staples that we depend on, there's no oil, there's no grapes, there's no grain. The, 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 the plague has destroyed everything. The three stable crops that we need to survive, they're gone. Can I bring that home to you? Can I bag it up? Can I go there? Can I break that down? There are three things that you got to protect if your nation is going to survive. The three things are you got to protect the church, the family, and the school. Don't let the plague eat them up. Can I go there? The prophet of the plague said, go in your closet. It's time to mourn. Why? Because most of our leaders, they don't know how to handle a plague. Can I go there this morning? I know, sister, when I listen to somebody, I can tell when they know what they're talking about. Uh, Stella, I can tell when they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, to deal with a plague, it's a spiritual problem. It has spiritual roots and it needs to be rooted up. Can I go there this morning? Can I give you the fast news right now? Every now and then, you got to bind up some things. Can I go there this morning? You got to bind principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Can I go there? The very prince over the city got to be bound up. The murdering spirit has to be bound up. Witchcraft spirit have to be bound up. Demonic spirit have to be bound up. How many know what I'm talking about this morning? How many know it's all about spiritual warfare? I got to come on here and land this plane. Hmm. When the forefathers went into this land, this land was blessed. Can I, can I back it up? Watch, watch, watch it now. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 7 and 8. It was blessed. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into what kind of land? It was good. A good land. A land of brooks of water, of fountains, and the depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Can y'all run with me? A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates a land of oil olives and honey now, is that all right is that a blessed land hmm. but the plague messed up everything can I back it up Coming to a close. Joel chapter 1, 11 and 12, those same things got messed up. Can I go there? How do you know it? Despair, you farmers. Well, somebody shout, well. You vine growers. Grieve, somebody shout, grieve. Why? For the wheat, that same stuff, and the barley, because the harvest of the field is destroyed, the vine is dried up, and the fig tree is withered, the pomegranate, the palm, and the apple tree. Matter of fact, all the trees of the field are dried up, surely. I need a surely. I need a loud surely. Surely the joy of mankind 
is withered away. Oh, the joy of the nation was gone. The plague had touched everything. The field, the grain, the vine, the olive tree, the wheat, the barley, the fig tree, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree, the apple tree, all trees. In summary, the nation was devastated. The joy was gone. How many know that God can devastate a nation? And how many know that God can take the joy away from a nation? All joy was gone because the harvest and the vintage was denied them. Psalms 4 and 7 says, hmm, Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. The increase brought joy. The decrease brought sadness. The bull market brought joy. The bear market brought sadness. The plague doctor uses many words in his diagnosis to describe the illness of the nation. His nation was ill and he knew his help me Holy Ghost he knew his nation was ill how many know that a nation can be ill he uses words like this in verse 9 he uses waste mourneth is destroyed dried up in verse 10 he uses languishes in verse 11, he uses perished. In verse 12, he uses withered, languishes, withered away. The joy was taken away. Please hear me. This was an unusual plague. This was an unusual situation that they've never been in before. The Spirit of God, which means the Holy Ghost, instructed Joel how to return the nation to blessings. God instructed Joel how to get the nation back on track again. God instructed the plague doctor in how to get rid of the plague. The Holy Spirit told Joel what to do to get everything turned around. Don't you want to know what he did and what we can do to turn the United States around? Guess what? I'll tell you next week. <laughs> Give God some praises. <laughs> Dr. Jackson, sing a song and then I'll give an invitation. Then we all do communion. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, to be continued. What? Thank you, Usher. Help us out, Usher. Precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other or 
all I found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus beautiful Dr. Jackson stand on your feet for a minute my heart fills your heart and ushers I don't want to rush you take your time ushers I we flow in together Thank you, choir, and thank you, Dr. Jackson. Thank you, Robbie Ushers. Thank you, Sister Robinson, the stewardesses, and your protégés who you have taught. <laughs> thank you, GQ, and Dr. Brown, and you stewards. Three things I want to present to you. I know this nation is sick. When you go after the most vulnerable babies, you wouldn't do that unless you're ill. And when a man lying on his sick bed, trying to get well, and you take his life, you're sick. You wouldn't. No, no. You wouldn't do it unless you're sick. Am I right, Katie? You wouldn't. You wouldn't do that unless you're sick. The nation is ill, but God has a way is in this plague doctor to get back again three things if you have not received jesus christ as your lord and personal savior i'm gonna ask that you step out into the aisles so i make sure i see you just step you don't have to come down just step just step in the aisles and i'll see you and we'll introduce christ to you and have you receive christ as your lord and personal savior and then wave your hand vigorously and i know you're there if you want to join Emmanuel Temple Church family, and we would love to have you become a member of Emmanuel Temple, just wave your hand vigorously like this, and I'll see you. Okay, I see you right there. Amen. See you right there. Okay, now I'll pray the prayer. Anybody else, just wave your hand. All right, all right. Okay, now and I'm going to pray with you, and then I'm going to pray for those in need. Now, if you need prayer this morning, you want to touch and agree, and believe God for prayer this morning, wave your hand at me. Okay. So I see that that one which is to join. I see you who need prayer. And let's come together in one accord in a believing, believing prayer. Because the Lord said, where two or more gather together and touch and agree, said, there I am in the midst of them. And whatever they ask in my name, I'll do it, that the Father be glorified in the Son. He says, greater things than these shall you do, because I go to my Father in heaven says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Some of y'all need a touch this morning. How many of y'all want me can say, touch me, Lord Jesus. Help me, God. Touch me, Lord Jesus. Put your hand on your body and say, touch me, Lord Jesus. Touch me, Lord Jesus. In the assembly of believers. In the book of Revelation, he walks amongst the candlesticks. He walks amongst the menorah. The Holy Spirit from heaven told John, John, he's walking amongst the churches. He's here right now. Raise your hand this morning to a God who's here. Somebody said, touch me, Lord Jesus. Dear Jesus, we thank you for our brother joining church this morning. Being part of the family of God. And then, Lord, we want to deal with ourselves. Touch us this morning. The songwriter said, songwriter said, I need thee. I need thee every hour. Stand thou nearby. Temptations lose their powers when thou art nigh. Uh, we want to be near you, Jesus. Walk with us, Jesus. We know you're inside of us, but you said the Holy Spirit will go along beside us to walk with us, Lord Jesus. In the days up ahead, the things we have to go through, things we have to face, walk with us, Lord Jesus. And then, Lord, we come like that leopard to say, touch us, Lord Jesus. And then we come like a centurion soldier says, speak the word only. Thy servant shall be healed. I need thee every hour. I need thee. Stand out nearby. We stand girded with our loins with truth and helmet of salvation and breastplate of righteousness. 
feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace and the sword of the spirit and the breastplate of righteousness, Lord, to undergo spiritual warfare. Then, Father, give our nation health. And then, Lord, we got big closets, walk-in closets. We want to tell the clothes to be quiet. Clothes shut up. I come in here to mourn. I haven't lost my mind. I come to mourn for my nation. Mourn for those in Texas. Mourn for those in Buffalo. Mourn for those in South Carolina. Mourn for those in Oklahoma. Mourn for those in the Ukraine and in, in Moscow. Wherever. Mourn for our sins. Touch us, Lord Jesus. Then when we commune with you, Lord God, hear our prayer. We just want to talk with you. Hear our desires. Thank you for the new family member. Bless our homes. Bless our health. Bless our household. When we go out those double doors, double gates, let us be blessed mightily. For the weeks up ahead, 2022, in Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. 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 Give God a shout of praise this morning. Give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Let's get ready now to sup. Hear the invitation. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God. And walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble com confession to almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Let us say the general confession together. Together, almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoing. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercies, just give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross, for our redemption, who made there by his oblation of himself once offered a full and perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful, merciful Father. We most humbly beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. When the same night that he was betrayed, bread when he had given thanks he break it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink ye all of this for this is my blood of the new testament which is shared for you and for many for remission of sins. Do this 
as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Beloved saints of God, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. The church say amen. amen. You may take the bread. This bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Broken for you and broken for many. Take and eat all of it. Knowing you have everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This cup represents the shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Forgiveness of sins and by his stripes we heal. You may take and drink all of it. Knowing you're forgiven of your sins by the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood. Church, say amen. If God is good, say amen. amen. If God has blessed you, say amen. amen. If you're glad to be a child of God, say amen. amen. Ah, you may stand on your feet. God loves you. So do I. Hands in the air. I feel this in my spirit. Somebody said, touch me, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Touch me, Lord Jesus. One more time. Touch me, Lord Jesus. Yeah, we got touched this morning. You're the soul of the earth. You're healthy. So you got to go in those closets and mourn for the nation. And you watch God heal the nation. And the plague specialist is going to tell you something next Sunday. You watch. Hands in the air. Now, Lord, you be all the praises, all the glory, all the honor, all the thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, we pray the blessings of Abraham that you bless these saints in all things. Spiritually, physically, mentally, family, finances and health and their ministry bless them in all things give them a blessed day a blessed week a blessed month a blessed year in 2022 and may the rest of their lives be the best of their lives in Jesus name we pray we do say amen give God a shout of praise I love you all